Hey my friend, this is Joe Bakmotsky. I am the author of Simplify Cancer, Men's Guide to Navigating the Everyday Reality of Cancer. And I'm also the founder of Power to Be Happy. Listen, right now I want to share with you the seven biggest lessons that I learned from cancer. And to be honest, these are not lessons about cancer. They really have nothing to do with cancer, it's just my experience. But they are really lessons about life. That's why I'm hoping so much that there will be something that you can take away. Because it really, cancer gave me a totally different perspective than I never had before. And now it's really enabled me to live a happy and more fulfilled life. So I hope something in here is going to serve you. The first thing I really wanted to share with you today is that every single day matters. You know, because what I've learned is when you go through life and something that hits you in the face, like cancer, which just happens, you're completely unprepared. And the reality is that you might be lying in the hospital bed and you realize that you don't know what's gonna happen. You might die, anything can happen. And that's one big thing that I've learned in my life that any day it can be taken away. And that's why we gotta cherish it. That's why we have to make it count. And I know that you know this. I know that this, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not telling you anything new. You know exactly what it is. But the reality is we all need a reminder sometimes. We all need to be reminded of, especially like on a, you know, on a day when, you know, things really don't go your way. Especially on a day when, you know, you're frustrated and maybe you've been busy. Maybe you've been, you know, running around all day and maybe really things haven't been working out at all. And you're, you're stressed and you're tired and, and you don't know what to do. I think in those moments, one thing that you can still do to make it count is to do one positive thing. Just one thing. You know, it, it can be small, you know, it, it doesn't have to be some epic thing. It can be something as small as, you know, giving a friend a call and, you know, saying, listen, I know you, you're going through a lot right now, but you're doing your best. So, good on you, you know, and cheering them on. You know, it could be something as simple as that. But that when you go to bed at night, you can say to yourself, listen, I've done something good today, even though it's been a rough day, maybe an awful day, but still I've done something, something positive. So yes, my friend, every single day matters. And that includes today. The second thing I've learned from Kens is that no one, no one is as invested in your own well-being as you are yourself. I think that's so critical because, you know, when I went through my cancer experience and I was done with my surgery and I had to decide, I had to decide on my next treatment, whether it's going to be radiation or chemotherapy, like there was all these pros and cons and I had to make up my mind and to do that, I had to go to do my research and, 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 and figure out what's right for me and try to find people who've been through it before and really try to wrap my head around it. And I really had to figure out what is going to be the best for me and for my way of life. But isn't it true that with or without cancer, in most situations in life, you run into perhaps well-meaning people. You know, they want the best for you, but they all have strong opinions and they all have different perspectives on which way is the right way to go. So sometimes you know, it's about figuring out what is right for you. What's figuring out for you is because no one is as invested in your own happiness, in your well-being and your way of life as you are yourself. And sometimes that means, you know, asking difficult questions. Sometimes this means making tough decisions. Sometimes that means, you know, you got to follow up, follow up and chase people around and saying, like, is, are we still on track? Are we still going to get to where we want to get to, right? So. I think that is the critical thing we want to take for ourselves is to take responsibility for what's happening in your life, to take ownership for your own well-being, for your happiness, for all the big decisions that you got to make, right? Because when you do that, you put yourself in control of your life. The third thing I want to tell you about is that no one owes you anything even when you need it the most. I stumbled into this 
when I was going through chemotherapy in my hospital and uh, I was there for a long time and uh, to be honest with you, there was a lot of people who kind of disappeared from my life at that period of time. There was a lot of people who did not support me in the way that I wanted to be supported. And to be honest, that was tough for me. You know, it was it was hard to take it. It, it got me upset and uh, and it took me a while to kind of get through it. But what I realized is the way that I look at it right now, that life is that, that I guess the way that I see it is that it's kind of like um, like a bus route, right? Where you, if you're a bus, you, you, you've got a certain starting point and, and then you've got a certain destination, right? So you start in one place and you're going along, kind of zooming along and then you there's a bus stop. So you, you pull in, you, you stop, some people get on and then you go on as a bus and then there's another bus stop and other bus stop. And at a certain point, the person who got on at the bus stop, maybe they've reached the point where they need to go. So they're going to get off. But, but the bus is still going. It's still got the destination is still going on. And you know what? I think that life is like that. You know, life's like that. You know, where you, you are going where you need to go. And there's people, you know, who are going to come in into your life at a certain point of time. And sometimes when maybe the things have changed, the, the timing has changed, or maybe it's kind of just not aligned with, with your values or who you are or, or where they are going. For some reason, there's going to be parts, uh, parts of your life and maybe some people, they're going to get off. And I think it's important kind of to realize that no one owes you anything. We don't expect it. If, 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 if it's all aligned and, you know, fantastic and you kind of go ahead. But if it's not, it's okay to let it go and, and just focus on the people who are there for you and focus on the people that you do have a strong, powerful connection with or that you will meet other people along the way. They're going to help you along the journey. The fourth thing I want to talk to you about is why worry about all the things that can go wrong when there is so much to make right. This honestly is like my life philosophy right now, because the way that I look at it, the way that I see the way that I see this playing out is that anything in our lives can happen, right? There's so many things that are outside of our control, right? I, I don't know, for example, my cancer could come back. I've just, just had a checkup yesterday, so it's gone. It's, it hasn't come back, which is really cool. <laughs> what a relief. But you know what? Anything can happen. Sometimes we really have no control over what's going to happen in your life. I think that's important to realize, right? So I think intellectually, right, we know this, but at the same time, it's about going, but what can I do that will be right? What can I do for people around me? You know, for maybe it's your partner, maybe it's your, your children, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your friends, maybe it's, you know, the people you work with, maybe it's your community. What can you do that's going to be Positive is going to kind of help people out in some way. It doesn't have to be some huge thing, but what can, can be something that make you feel good about yourself, but also make this world a, a better place. <laughs> no, that's a cliche, but that's what it is, right? It's about making the world just a little bit better because even when all those things that could go wrong, we don't know, right? Anything can happen, but there is so much that we can make right. The next thing I want to talk to you about is that no one really knows you the way that you know yourself. You know, especially when you're going through a tough time, you know, maybe you're really stressed or maybe you have problems with your health. And I think it's fair to say that even when you're going through it and even when other people know about that, I think what, what sometimes happens is they don't really know how it's going on for you, right? They don't know what is the right thing to say. They don't know what is the right thing to do because they don't want to offend you. They don't want to make it, you feel worse. So it's up to us to really guide them, right? Because no one really knows you the way that you know yourself. So you can kind of guide them to be there for you in a meaningful way. You know, I think if, 
uh, for me, as I guess it was, I was thinking think back on my experience with cancer, and as I kind of relate back to that, I think what I would have done differently right now is, uh, I hope I never <laughs> have to go there again. But if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably send um, an email and I would what I would write, or maybe do a video like this one, right? Or just write things out. I would just say, listen, here is what's happening so that you know what's going on. And it's a pretty crazy time. And here's a list of all the things that we need help with. So if you feel like you, you want to volunteer for something, then let me know. Just hit reply and let me know. And I think it goes a long way because the reality is that it allows people to choose how they can be there for you, how they can support you in a meaningful way. And the reality is that when you do that, when you are specific, when you are direct, when you tell people how they can help you, you're going to get the support that you want on your terms. Remember, because no one knows you the way that you know yourself. So step up and guide your people to meaningful action. Right, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is, and this is really, again, something that I've, I've discovered almost by accident in life. And that is that when you commit to something that is bigger than yourself, your worry fades into the background. You know, when I was done with cancer and I got my all clear, um, I didn't realize that I would have to start, you know, these regular checkups every three months where I would, you know, leading up to the three months, I would go and do a whole bunch of tests. And then I would go and see my, my oncologist and they would do a physical examination. We would basically see if the cancers come back. So you constantly kind of in a place where you don't know what's going to happen. Like there's a lot of uncertainty and that would get me worked up and, and worried about it because I didn't know what was going to happen and it was kind of hard to plan things. But what I realized that, you know, I kind of thrown myself into going, look, I mean, it's not an easy place to be. I, I, I got to, um, you know, I'm sure there's other people going through it. I got to do something to to kind of make a difference, to figure this thing out and help other people along the way. And that's really how I began my Simplify Cancer podcast. You know, when I started to really interview you know, experts in the, uh, you know, around uh, wellness and, and, and uh, medical experts, all to do with oncology, to, to kind of talk about different strategies to deal better with stress, stress and, and, and the emotional side of cancer and the physical side of it and the side effects. But also talking to cancer survivors, you know, people like me who've been through it themselves, who are sharing their insight on what kind of things are helping them to lead a better life. And it just became this kind of big project that, that kind of ended up making a much greater difference than I thought I would do initially. And also led me to write the, well, this book, right? Simplify Cancer, Man's Guide to Navigating the Everyday Reality of Cancer, which I'm super proud of because I know it's, you know, practical, real life advice that men can apply in their life right now for dealing with cancer, you know? So I'm really proud of that. But what I realized is, you know, that by making a difference in, in my own way, right? What I've realized is, um, that it's really shifted all of my focus away from worry. It's kind of just channels it into a different way. And it doesn't mean that you got to write a book, but we all can find ways that are meaningful to you, right? And in a way that you would find that you would make a difference in your own way. Maybe that's volunteering for a cause that you care about. Maybe it's doing some sort of a collaboration, but doing something, or maybe it's doing something for your family. You know, maybe it's, uh, you know, renovating the kitchen. Maybe, you know, I don't know what that is for you, but the reality is you can find something, something that is bigger than you. Because when you elevate it, when you elevate it beyond yourself, you're going to start to be less in your head, if that makes sense. And you start to be so much more just real and, and you're trying to make a difference for something that is not about you. You know, so you are redirecting your worry. And when you commit to something that is bigger than yourself, then your worry, it doesn't exactly disappear, but it fades into the background to the point where it's no longer running your life. 
Another last thing I want to talk to you about today is that hope is the only thing that is stronger than fear. You know, sometimes we have a lot of challenges and problems in our lives that are things that are difficult to live with, things that are difficult to, to swallow, things that are difficult to confront. And maybe you don't know how things are going to turn out. You know, maybe you've been in that place in your life or, well, I hope you never do, but these things happen sometimes, you know. And sometimes we don't really have control over these things. But what I want to say to you, my friend, what I want to say to you is we got to hope. Hope that things will change. Hope that things will get better. Hope that something shifts. Hope that something changes and things start to look up for you. That things start to look up for people that you care about. So that things start to all of a sudden change and that you feel better about yourself. Hoping that things that somehow, somehow are going to shift in a positive direction, right? And this hope, this hope that things will turn out better, that hope, that hope I feel is the only thing that is stronger than fear. Listen, I hope this has served you in some way. I hope um, that you got something out of it because it's just been something that's completely transformed my perspective on life. So I really hope that it, it has really served you in some way. Listen, my name is Joe Bakmutsky. I'm the author of, as I said, <laughs> three times now, <laughs> Simplify Cancer, Man's Guide to Navigating the Everyday Reality of Cancer. If you feel that uh, you know someone who might benefit from this book, well, go ahead and grab yourself a copy or to find out more, really, go to SimplifyCancerBook.com and you can find out more right there. Um, also, as I said to you at the start, I'm the founder of Power to Be Happy. This is where I, know I, share, uh, I share all those things about how to be you know, more happy and more fulfilled in your daily life. And if that sounds like something that you could be interested in, then go ahead and sign up to my weekly email newsletter. You know, if um, if you go to right now, if you go to power to be happy dot com, put your name and email. And I'm going to send you weekly emails on how to access your power to be happy. Listen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening to this. Let's stay in touch.